Hello, I'm Dapper Dan Gavazdan, and I own every issue of Amazing Spider-Man, including the annuals and issue 400, all of which definitely count. Well, I'm the mischievous Mark Giannacchio, and I own every issue of Amazing Spider-Man, Amazing Fantasy 15, and the annuals, but they don't count. Well, welcome everybody to the 400th episode of the Amazing Spider Talk, the show where two fans and collectors uncover the strange... Wait. Wait, hold on a minute. What did you say, Mark? Rewind that. I I said the same thing I say all the time, Dan. I own every issue of Amazing Spider-Man, including the annuals. Which count, uh, un unlike Aunt May's death in, in issue 400. But no, Mark, you said something else. Well, the annuals don't count unless you implant a bomb in their brain to say they count. I, I, I don't understand where you're going with this, Dan. I, I have considered it, Mark, but no, it was something else. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I, I own Amazing Fantasy 15, you know, this, this, this comic. Do you, have you heard of it? What? Have you heard of it? Do you know I, what this I is? I have heard of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I own this now. Congratulations, Mark. Congratulations. Uh, one, I say our, our feud is officially <laughs> over. There is no more official way to put that boot down. But uh, congratulations, Mark. Do you want to tell everybody a little bit about this? Well, you know, I was looking at getting a second copy of Planet of the Symbiotes uh, annual <laughs> just to relive one of our great arguments of all time. But no, I so look, um, you don't know, just like wake up one day and say, I'm going to own Amazing Fantasy number 15. But that's almost kind of what happened here. Um, I, I, <laughs> I was browsing had an opportunity i saw the door was open in terms of a uh, condition and a price point that i uh wanted to make this thing for uh did a very uh major negotiation with uh the my significant other to kind of justify why i just needed to go for this and and i went for it and, and it actually brings me back to you know one of our listeners uh canadian jason uh, we had a conversation uh, last year at Terrificon, and he said, you know, he had pr picked up his copy of Amazing Fantasy 15 sometime before, and he said, look, like, when your moment comes, you'll know it, and you just got to do it, and you won't have any regrets, I promise. And I was like, oh, what are you talking about? Like, I'm never, it's, no, it's not going to happen for me. And, you know, so, you know, Jason, your your bagels and your bacon are terrible, but you were right about Amazing Fantasy fifteen. So um, you know, so so yeah, I I own it now. Um, and no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna flaunt it over you in our intro going forward. But let's just say, um, if you come at me with some random like free comic book day issue, I I I will I will smack you with the slab. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, as much as we joke, obviously I knew about this already because Mark and I have been, you know, celebrating in whatever way we can. And I'm sure there'll be many more conversations about this, you know, and, and now I have to try to match that, which is not a, a, a dubious fate um, because I haven't even like I, I was saying to Mark before the show, like the the real thing that like I think changed is you got to be looking for it. You know, right. like the minute you start looking, it's going to happen. You're going to find it. And, you know, like hopefully it comes to you in a way that, you know, you can, you know, conceivably jump on it. Um, right. You know, like worst comes to worst. These things always resell. Like, you know, it, it isn't really like cutting off a leg, you know, like, it, you know, it, 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 you can get what you spend on it back for the most part. You know, so like if you were to do that now, it's part of you, Mark. Now it's yeah. your now it's actually a leg and you're not yeah. going to let go of it. But I haven't even started looking myself. And so in the me so in the meantime, I'm so thrilled for you because like it feels like a major life achievement. So uh, and I know it means as much for you and few people can understand that. Well, there you go. But 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 speaking of life achievements, Dan, we we have the ultimate life achievement here. I mean, you know, we have a podcast of which we could put a tombstone on the cover for, right? I mean, what's what's happening today? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mark. Uh, it it. I mean, first of all, what an awesome way to celebrate uh, our podcast <laughs> with that announcement. But uh, you heard me right at the top of the show, and you heard Mark right. He does own Amazing Fantasy fifteen. 
But I said something that got buried in the wake of that, which is this is the 400th episode of The Amazing Spider Talk. And boy, do we have a fun show for you guys today. But first, before the fun, we got to get our homework out of the way. Mark, tell our listeners how they can support our show. Yeah, if you want to swing along through Spidey's past, present, and future, you got to subscribe to Amazing Spider Talk on your favorite uh, podcast app and leave us a review to help spread the word about our great show. Right, Dan? Yeah, absolutely. This podcast, all 400 episodes of it exists because of the support of our Patreon members. If you want to receive early episodes, exclusive artwork, and keep our podcast going to 500, 600, 700, and Mark's eventual demise... Uh, at the hands of promising he would do this show, go to <laughs> AmazingSpiderTalk.com and consider joining our Patreon. All right, now for the fun part. 400 episodes, 10 years, and a ton of friends made along the way. One such friend is our guest tonight. Many of you will remember my reckless interview with him all the way back in 2020 during the height of the pandemic. He's the Guinness Book of World Records holder for the world's largest collection of Spider-Man memorabilia. I hope I got that right. And a good friend of mine. And even better, he's offered to host a game show celebration pitting Mark and me against each other in our knowledge of Spider-Man and for ownership of his amazing Fantasy 15. <laughs> uh, and this show's history. It's Tristan Matthews. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. It's awesome to finally meet Mark. And congratulations. What a... What an amazing accomplishment to, to own Amazing Fantasy 15. What a, I'm so excited for you. I mean, it's no Guinness Book of World Records, but thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, on that note, I do, you know, I, there are a lot of really amazing uh, collections out there, and, and I, not your fans. You guys have the best fans ever. But uh, some folks on the Internet will, will make sure to tell me that uh, about all the other bigger collections. So I'm aware of them. I know. I just, uh, it was fun to go for the record, and um, it was just a bit of fun. And I'm, I'm happy to, to be here on the podcast through that you don't have you don't have to safeguard it we, your collection has the biggest heart and and that's and, there you and go. that's what matters to us you know so a lot of gifts uh, a lot of gifts yeah yeah um, uh very cool very cool well tristan welcome to the back to the show um you know we're going to be doing a bit of a fun competition here tell us a little bit more about like what listeners can expect and how this is going to play out because mark yeah, and well, I, I honestly have no idea yeah Right. Yeah, we've, we've been pretty good about keeping this from both of you, so that's great. Um, again, I'm Tristan. I'm the adjectiveless uh, Tristan Matthews, the spinoff host. Um, I, again, appreciate you guys inviting me on for this competition. I hope it uh, inspires questions uh, and an intelligent conversation amongst two fans uh, as we look at the Spider-Man trivia verse in a, big, a, bit, of a bit of a bigger picture. Um, so we're going to have six rounds. Uh, for the most part, these are going to be multiple choice questions. Um, with a few fill in the blank and then a couple like listicle type questions. Uh, when it is a multiple choice question, you both have dry erase boards, right? So you can write down your answers. Right here. Right on. Perfect. Let, All right, let, great. Let Before this I... be a plug for the video version of this show. Right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, and your beautiful faces. I mean, we want to be able to see those. Or your copy Made of Amazing Radio. Fantasy 15. Right. <laughs> um, so with the multiple choice questions, I will give you the opportunity to answer the question without getting the multiple choice answers first. If you're able to answer the question without the multiple choices, you will get three points for the answer. If you need the multiple choice answers, you will only get one point for a correct answer. So it sort of incentivizes the risk of just guessing uh, before I read out the, the other options. Does that make sense? How would you like us to buzz in if we know the answer? Well, you'll write it down. And then once you write okay. it down, you'll flip your dry erase board over. And then if the other host needs to have the other choices, they will then ask for it. And then we'll read. And then after that, we'll do that. I mean, you're both good friends. So a lot of this is going to be a bit of a honor system since I'm not. I mean, we have a, his amazing board. fantasy 15 is on the line. So, you know, it's true. like uh... you, 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 you keep saying this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have you, something you on the word. line for both of you uh -oh. uh, that we'll get to. We'll get to in a moment. But um the other thing that, I, since this is a, fen a friendly game, uh, you're each welcome to challenge if you think a question or an answer I give is wrong or unfair or misleading. Uh, the, the caveat to that is your co-host will be the one who decides if your uh, challenge is upheld. So you'll sort of have to plead your case to the other one. Oh, boy. Um, uh, because, again, this is, my, this is my first time doing a trivia game, so uh, maybe I have some answers a little goofy. So you guys well, will let me Well, good thing Mark and I always agree. Right. Exactly. Um, so, before we get started, I will show you, we do have this 
Uh, it's it's no amazing fantasy fifteen. I'm sorry, Dan, um, and uh, I didn't know you were getting that. So this now looks a little paltry in comparison. But we have a little Spider Man medallion that I will Ooh. send to the the winning host. I'll send a photo over to you, Dan, if you want to post that. Um, and that's it. Are you guys ready to to start up with round one, the warm up round? I, I, I am terrified, but but ready. <laughs> my body is ready. Let's go. Oh okay, God. perfect. Here we go. Question number one. In what year did Spider-Man first appear? Mark, you should be right on top of that one. Yeah, I'm on it. Does anybody need this a multiple choice? The, this is not the multiple choice, no? Yeah. There is a multiple choice if you would like it, but then it'll be worth one point. Would you like the multiple choice, or are you comfortable with your answer? I'm comfortable with my answer. I am, I am too comfortable with my answer. Okay. Dan, why don't you go first? What, uh, what did you guess? I guessed 1962. Mark, what was your guess? I, too, guessed 1962. Wonderful. We're off to a great start. You both have three right. points. Question number two. In Amazing Spider-Man number one's B story, Spider-Man vs. the Chameleon, how does the Chameleon initially reach out to Spidey? I will require multiple choice. <laughs> okay. Dan, I don't you, know uh... the exact phrasing, but I'm going to make my guess. Okay. And you've already written it's it? It's like a... Wait, wait. Yes. Wait, don't say it yet. I'm going to read the multiple choice. Okay, all right. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, Mark. Is it A, he took out an ad in the Daily Bugle? Mm -hmm. Is it B, he has a device that communicates with spiders who then lead Spider-Man to him? Is it C, he didn't reach out, Spidey just happened to swing by him? Or is it D, he broadcast a frequency that is picked up by Peter Spider-Sense? Okay. I, okay. I, I, I have a guess. <laughs> Perfect. Mark, why don't you go for... I'm sorry, actually, Dan, why don't you go first since you're going to have different phrasing. Well, I originally called it Spider Radio, but it, it's D. He's broadcast on a signal of Peter's spider sense. Okay. And Mark, what is your guess? I put the Daily Bugle thing, so I, I'm, I'm okay. down. <laughs> I, so, <laughs> we got three points to Dan. Oh, my God. <laughs> That Amazing that. Fantasy 15 is coming into view for me. <laughs> we, got a, we got a long game ahead of us, guys. Don't get caught. Oh, copied. my God. <laughs> okay. Question number three. Peter Parker graduates from high school in Amazing Spider-Man number 28. Who gives the commencement address at his graduation? I know this one. Mark, it looks like you're writing as well, so no multiple yeah. choice. Yeah. Mark, why don't you go first? I said J. Jonah Jameson. Okay. Dan? And I said, I said JJJ. You are both right. Three points to both of you. Whew. This is... Mark is sweating bullets over there. I'm, I'm, I, I, well, Mark, I, I do... Mark, I'm hoping this one helps you a little bit. I think, I think okay. you've got this next one. Okay. Uh, this, this one will be a little different with multiple choice, so forgive the wonkiness of it. But the main feature in Amazing Fantasy 15 is, of course, the Spider-Man origin. But there were mm -hmm. three other stories in this issue. I need you to either write those th the names of those three stories, or I'll read you multiple choice, and you can tell me which one is not in, in the issue. I'm going to need the multiple choice because I only know the name of one of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and again, since this is friendly, if, even if you approximated the, the names of the stories, um, it doesn't have to be a one-to-one. -one. I'll, I'll take the multiple choice. Okay. Dan is, Dan is going to whoop my butt. All right, here we go. Dan, let me know when you're, when you're ready for me to start reading. Mark. I'm ready to go. Okay. Which of the following Mark is not in Amazing Fantasy 15? Is it A, the bell ringer? Is it B, what happened in the wax museum? Is it C, man in the mummy case? Or is it D, there are Martians among us? Okay. Okay. Dan, do you want to read the three stories from Amazing Fantasy 15 that are not the Spider-Man origin? Um, yeah, so I only got one of the names accurately, but maybe you'll consider g giving me some mercy here, okay? So the first one I said was the Bell Ringer. Then I said uh, Martian Invasion. And the third one I said was the Mummy's Tomb. Got it. Um, Mark, what did you put? I put B, the Wax Museum. Okay, Mark, you were correct for one point, And then this is where your co-host comes in, Dan. Mark, do you accept the paraphrasing of, of the titles for Dan? I will allow it. Okay. 
So three I points am, for Dan. Gracious, what a gracious co-host. I am a benevolent, <laughs> benevolent co-host. Well, you're still riding the high from Amazing Fantasy 15. Yeah, well, right, you know. You know, I'm gonna, he's going to have to send a self-addressed stamped envelope if he thinks he's going to get those. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. Question number five. In the Golden Age, the Daily Bugle first appeared in Marvel Mystery Comics number 18. When it returned to comics during the Silver Age, where did it first reappear? Would either of you like multiple choice? Yes. Um, do you need number or series? I was going to go with the number, but if you have the series and Dan accepts it, then you get the points. I, These are I feeling a lot harder than I thought they were. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I would accept the series. All right. I, I, will, I will keep my answer then. Okay. Dan, was it A, Tales of Suspense, number 39? Was it B, Amazing Fantasy 15? Is it C, Amazing Spider-Man, number one? Or is it D, Fantastic Four, number two? Well, I wrote on my board Amazing Spider-Man, number one. So I'm going to choose that. Okay. Um, Mark? I wrote Fantastic Four on my board. It was Fantastic Four, number two. So... Three points to Mark. All right. Catching up. There you go. You're securing right. that. Uh... Okay. Question number six. What is the first attempt at a spinoff series from The Amazing Spider-Man? And this is the question that I, I wrote the, uh, the rule that you can challenge anything in case, this is, in case you disagree with this one. Okay. Okay. Do we need a multiple choice or are you both confident? I, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident. I'm fairly confident. Okay. Mark? I wrote Marvel Team Up. Dan? I wrote Spectacular Spider-Man Magazine. Oh! It was Spectacular Spider-Man Magazine. Three points for Dan. I'm sorry, Mark. Oh! <laughs> ah! I forgot. Okay, we have, we have three more questions for round one. You guys ready for number seven? Let's In do Spider-Man it. Rain... In Spider-Man Reign, which we're getting the sequel to shortly. I, I challenged this question. <laughs> I, I, I heard how controversial it was. I wanted to, uh, Mark, uh, when I've been listening through the podcast, I wanted to tally how many times you guys said semen in the episode about Spider-Man Reign, which was a considerable amount. In Spider-Man Reign, what is the security system that Mayor Waters announces will protect New York City from an outside threat? I require multiple choice. Dan, do you have your answer written down already? I do, yes. Okay. Is it A, the rain? Is it B, the web? Is it C, thwip? Or is it D, the shield? I guessed. I have a okay. guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dan, do you want to go first? It's the web. Mark, I wrote the I wrote the shield, so there you go. It, it was the web. Oh, Mark, I, I feel like you're, it'll it, it'll get easier. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Question number. That one was eight. like a that was a fastball right down home plate for me. I, I I put a couple fastballs in for each of you, I believe. So great. Okay. Um, what is considered to be Spider-Man's first line-wide crossover event? Can you define li li a line-wide crossover event? Yes. So this would be a Spider-Man story that took place over different ongoing titles of Amazing Spider-Man with a masthead above it that sort of names it. This is another okay. one that so might be a bit... Not like a, not like a crossover, like uh, just things going in and out of books, but a like event storyline. That's right. Okay. I wrote something down, but I'm prepared to have the challenge. Okay. I wrote something down too. Do we want to do, Mark, do you want to do uh, multiple choice or do you feel like no, I'm, I'm, we can I, go straight for it? I want to I go for this. Okay, go okay, ahead, Mark. Me too. I wrote the tablet saga, the stone tablet. Okay. Dan? And I wrote Maximum Carnage. Well, Maximum Carnage is the answer that I have. 
uh, because it went over all all the different Spider-Man titles, and it was the first time. I would say that the Stone Tablet Saga is the first multi. It was like a twelve-part storyline that, like, you know, had multiple arcs within arcs. It was considered one of the first true Spider-Man events. It didn't. There was only one book at the time, so it couldn't cross over into others. But I feel like that's like that's why I wanted to focus it in season two, Dan, as an episode. That you know, I kept saying to you, <laughs> and you were like, "Why do you want to talk about this?" I'm like, "It's the first Spider-Man event, Dan." And you were like, "I, I can't." Like I pushed back that hard on it. <laughs> Look, I. I don't disagree with you that it is the first Spider-Man like uh, like long storyline event kind of thing of that nature. But per the rules of the question, it's the first time that a, a, a masthead on over the name like Maximum Carnage is the one. Uh, I, I'm happy to give you points, Mark, because I love that story. But I think per fine, the rules of the question. Fine, fine. <laughs> Honestly, Craven's Last Hunt would have been the one that, for me, would have been a bit of a slippery slope because it did cross over between the other titles. But but oh, what I have actually, is actually, yeah, that's probably the better answer. Yeah, but it, but it, was it <laughs> called Craven's Last Hunt uh, uh, on the cover? I believe it was, but I I, yeah. I can't I can't. We're all can't wrong. Say that. We're all wrong. We're all wrong. We're all, We're all, wrong. Wrong. all right. I love that. <laughs> I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the last question for round one. Number nine. In, a, in Superior Spider-Man number one, Otto Pete is interrupted while visiting the grave of Otto Octavius when a report on a police scanner comes through that the Sinister Six is attacking Empire State University, or they're staging a robbery, rather. Who is not a member of this version of the Sinister Six? So you can either write this version of the Sinister Six out, or I can give you the multiple choice option. If you want a hint, I'd it like is to the, give it an attempt. It is the superior foes. If you want a hint. All right, Dan. I think Mark went first last time. So Dan, what would you say? The Lady six, Beetle. Uh, if you want to call her Lady Beetle, Beetle, um, Big Wheel, Boomerang. Shocker, Overdrive, and Living Brain. Mark? I have Boomerang, Speed Demon, Beetle, Overdrive, Shocker. Mark is right. Big Wheel was not in that version of the Sinister Six. Yeah, Overdrive oh. was driving Big Wheel. That's right. Oh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. But if the multiple choice would have been Big Wheel was the, was the guess. Okay, guys, here we are at the end of round one. We have uh, Dan at 18 and Mark closely behind at 13. I think there are a little over uh, 2,000 points available in this game, Mark, so you've got a lot of room to, to, to catch up. Not to oh say you'll get goodness. those points. Yeah, no, you guys ready for round well. two? Let's do it. All round right. two. Okay. Since this is a centennial episode, I'm going to ask one question, question about each of the Amazing Spider-Man centennial issues. And I'm also going to throw an Amazing Fantasy 1000 in honor of uh, Mark's new uh, addition to his collection. Oh, wow. Okay. These are multiple choice. In Amazing Spider-Man 100, Peter has a nightmare where he's forced to battle five of his fiercest foes. Which of these foes is not in the nightmare? Is it A, Mysterio, B, the Kingpin, C, the Vulture, D, the Green Goblin, or E, Doc Ock. Mark, what is, what's your answer? I wrote A, Mysterio. Dan? I wrote A, Mysterio as well. It was Mysterio. You each get a point. All right. In your favorite right. centennial, Amazing Spider-Man 200, <laughs> it is revealed that Aunt May and Uncle Ben's <laughs> home was once owned by a mobster during the Prohibition era. He had money hidden in the walls, which retcons the reason that the burglar stopped at their home that night. What is the name of the mobster? Is it A, Matches Malone? Is it B, Dutch Malone? Is it C, Butch Malone? Is it D, Duke Malone? Or is it E, Butcher Malone? Th th this, is, this is for shame. This is, this is a proof that Mark and I need to read 200 more. I have my Are you guys answer. ready? Yeah. Okay. I have my answer as well. Mark, what did you pick? I have B, Dutch Malone. I Dan? have B, Dutch Malone as well. Look at that. You both got a point. 
<laughs> Look at that. We, we like 200. <laughs> In Amazing Spider-Man 300, Peter and Mary Jane are forced to move out of their apartment after Venom's visit leaves MJ feeling unsafe. Where do they move? Is it A, back to Aunt May's, much to Nathan Lubinsky's dismay? Is it B, Bedford Towers? Is it C, Bedrock Estates? Is it D, Caesar's Palace? Or is it E, they move above the Osborne family in a Soho loft? All right, Dan, Mark went first last time. So what is your answer? I'm going to say B, uh, the Towers. Okay, Mark? I wish I knew I was more sure of this. I wrote C, Bedrock Estate. It was unfortunately B, Bedford Towers. Well, fortunate for Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, I originally said Aunt May's house because I know that like he shows up, uh, Eddie Brock shows up at Aunt May's house to threaten Peter uh, later on, which doesn't make sense if Peter's not living there. But uh, I, I remembered that they lived together uh, in, in a new apartment building. So, In Amazing Spider-Man 400, what are Peter's last words to Aunt May before she passes away? Are they do I need A? The, do, I, do I need the uh, you do the not. multiple choice here? <laughs> Dan, do you need multiple I, choice? I, I will need multiple choice. So if Mark can nail okay. this, you know, more, more uh, power to him. All right. I got it. Okay. Is it A, there's no place like home? Is it B, let go, fly, second to the right and straight on to morning? Is it C, curiouser and curiouser? Or is it D, this is your life and it's ending one minute at a time? <laughs> uh, I, I, I know what it is now. I, I thought it might be that, but didn't have it yet. Mark, what did you write? I wrote second to the right and straight on till morning. That works. We'll say three points for Mark, one point for Dan. And I said B. I would hope so. <laughs> Although Peter does say curiouser and curiouser an awful lot in the, in the Bronze Age. Okay, moving on to question five. In Amazing Spider-Man 500, Peter has to fight his way through time in order to stop Reed Richards from making a mistake against what villain? I don't need the multiple choice. I will, I will ask for the multiple choice. Okay. Mark, is it... Are you ready, Dan? Sorry. I'm ready, yeah. Okay. Again, what villain is Peter Parker trying to stop Reed Richards from making a mistake against? Is it A, Loki? Is it B, Doctor Doom? Is it C, Mephisto? Is it D, Dormammu? Or is it E, Annihilus? Okay. I thought that's what it was, but I wasn't Dan, sure. Dan, what did you guess? I wrote Dormammu. Mark? I have D, Dormammu. It is Dormammu. Classic uh, Spider-Man villain, as much as Kamala Khan is a classic Spider-Man ally. Long, long time, Amazing Spider-Man stalwart, Dormammu. Yeah. <laughs> In Amazing Spider-Man 600, Aunt May marries J. Jameson. Johnny Storm is a guest at the wedding. Who brought him as their date? I believe I know this one without... I will take multiple choice. <laughs> Who brought Johnny Storm as their date? Was it A, Mary Jane Watson? Was it B, Michelle Gonzalez? Was it C, Carly Cooper? Was it D, Nora Winters? Or is it E, Betty Brandt? I don't know this one, so I'm going to forfeit my points. I, I don't remember this one well. I wrote Michelle B. Dan? Well, I know that you didn't have any of those, but what was your guess? I wrote, I wrote Felicia Hardy down. Got it. It was C, Carly Cooper. Ooh. Don't move, Carly Cooper. An amazing Spider-Man 700, Otto, now in Peter's body, tries to leave the country in a round-trip flight that will keep him in the air for 15 hours. Enough time for Doc Ock to die and the plan to be successful. Where was Peter planning to travel to and from before his EO got the best of him? Was it A, Belarus? Was it B, Bora Bora? Was it C, Berlin? Or was it D, Belgium? Dan, what did you guess? I, I wrote C. I think that's Berlin. I wrote D, Belgium. 
It was D Belgium. So Mark oh. gets a point. <laughs> Dark catch him back up. <laughs> <laughs> now All we're right, get we some have beer <laughs> and, and 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 he's he's going to Bruges to just let the whole thing wash over. There we go. All right, guys, we're in the home stretch. We're now on question eight for Amazing Spider-Man 800. In the issue, Normie Osborn justifies trying to kill Aunt May for what reason? Oh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess. Okay, I know this one too. All right, Mark. Other than the your fact guess? that he's the gob, the goblin childy. Yes. Other than that. Um, I, I wrote her cookies suck. Dan? And I said I said bad wheat cakes. Oh, damn it. Well, Mark, you were right. Uh, it was B because she uses raisins in her cookie recipe. Oh. So I'm going to give the points to Mark. <laughs> oh, I, I, like he said wheat cakes. I was like, oh, wheat cakes. Okay. <laughs> Can we all admit it would be funnier if he said bad wheat cakes? Fair. <laughs> Get that note to Dan Slot. in addition to your other feedback. In Amazing Spider-Man 900, uh, I think your second favorite centennial, uh, Peter Parker again celebrates his birthday. In, in issue 500, he was gifted a visit with Uncle Ben from Doctor Strange. Who gave him a gift in this issue, and what was it? I feel like you guys are going to, you'll probably benefit from multiple choice for this one. Yeah, I'll take multiple choice here. I have an idea, but, but, I, but I don't think it's right. Okay. Was it A, Bobby Morris gave him a birthday smooch? Was it B, Anna Maria gave him a birthday smooch? Was it C, Felicia Hardy gave him a birthday smooch? Or was it D, Nora Winters gave him a birthday smooch? Hmm. Who kisses Spider-Man for his birthday, or Peter Parker for his birthday, an amazing Spider-Man 900? Can I tell you what I thought it was that's not the smooch? Yeah. I'm not going to allow it. I said the living, the living brain give, gave him affirmation. But, uh, but I also know who gave him the smooch. Mark, what did you guess? I, 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 I don't have great memory. I wrote D. Nora. Dan? And I, I said C. Black Cat. Ah. Uh, or Felicia. It was, it, was Fel it was the Black Cat. Okay. All right, guys, final question for the round. And then we're out of the centennials. Question number 10. We're going to stick with the birthday theme. An Amazing Fantasy 1000 in a story by Dan Slott and Jim Chung titled Spider-Man and His Sinister 60th. We see a future where Peter and Mary Jane are together in their 60s. What does Peter say that Mary Jane does for him every year on his birthday? Does it have to be appropriate for the podcast? <laughs> if you want the points, but if you don't. <laughs> Depends on what's appropriate. Uh, let's was get it, the multiple choice. Was it A, she gives him a birthday smooch? Was it B, she eats his birthday cake because he's never on time for dinner? Is it C, she goes with him to leave flowers at the graves of Uncle Ben and Aunt May? Or is it D, they spend the night prank phone calling J. Jonah Jameson? Mark, what is your guess? I said the flowers, C. Okay. Dan, what is I your guess? I said the flowers see as well. It is not. He complains that she eats his birthday cake and he never gets a slice. Uh, every year. Oh. All right, guys. We're through round two. Oh, my God. How you, how you feeling? <laughs> how you guys feeling? Dumb. I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing pretty good, Mark. We're, uh, Dan has 24 points and Mark, you're at 23. So despite feeling dumb, you're, you're right there. <laughs> And uh, I think this next round is it's going to be probably the, the most complicated round. Those first two were sort of warm, warming you up for this one. Okay. Um, so we're going to do round three. It's villains A to Z. Uh, I put together a list of 152 villains who were introduced in a Spider-Man comic. And I include Marvel Team Up as a Spider-Man comic. Uh, oh, boy. We will, we will start with the letter A and alternate between hosts. You will each guess a villain whose name starts with that letter. And we're going to be guessing their costumed identity. We're only going to guess one version of the costumed identity. So if this were Captain America, uh, you could say Captain America Steve Rogers, and then the next person can't say Captain America Sam Wilson, etc. You'll get one point to name a villain. You will get one point if you name their secret identity. 
you will gain two points if you can guess their first appearance. And then I will give you two points per creator if you can name their creator. So if we're going by the Captain America, you know, you could say, uh, you know, Simon and Kirby, and then you'd get four points for that. That's ambitious, Tristan. Uh, I, I, I totally understand. Do. Yeah, we could cut it if you guys want. We could just go straight to the next round. Uh, the, the other important part to distinguish is if there's another identity that a character does create, like with Captain America Steve Rogers, you could say Nomad Steve Rogers, and that would count. Hmm. Are you guys ready? Probably not, but... <laughs> okay. Let's so, do it. Dan, you are in the lead, so I'm going to go ahead and let Mark go first. Uh. Mark, starting with the letter A, can you name a Spider-Man uh. villain? Aunt May. No. Um, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do I get? <laughs> I'd say roughly 15 seconds. Okay. Hold and on. we'll alternate back and forth until we run out of... If you can't think of one, you can pass to your co-host. Your co-host will then have a chance to sort of answer one last character on their end and then we'll alternate who goes first with each letter i have a cheat okay alien alien symbiote amazing spider-man 252 <laughs> <laughs> or secret dan? wars 8 <laughs> dan would you would you count that one um it is not I on my mean... list <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to go with your list, Tristan. Oh, okay. come on! Fine. <laughs> Pass. Uh, how about Ar Armadillo? I don't have Armadillo on my list, but it should have been there. <laughs> Ar okay, Armadillo. Well, it's not on the list, you know? Then, then rules are rules. Okay. Do we want to close out A, then? Mark, you have, have you thought I, of something else? I don't have an A. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Terrible. Well, the ones left on the table that I have on my list are the answer. I have what about, arcade. What about what? Ab, what about oh, um, Ant Man? I do not have Ant Man. These are also characters that were introduced in a Spider-Man comic. Um, Got it. I have Armada. Mm. I have the Arranger, and that's it. A is a tough one. We got some other All tough right. ones okay. coming up too. All right, let's Dan, put, Mark, let's put Armadillo first. down even if I don't get points for it. Mm. I wrote it on the list for the next podcast. All right, Dan, Mark went first, so why don't you go first with B? Okay, what about um, does the Beetle count? I know he wasn't introduced in Spider Man comics. This is only characters that are introduced in a Spider Man comic. Got it. So let's go with Big Wheel. Big Wheel is one of the answers. Do you know what their okay, secret and that, identity and that's is? Jackson, Jackson Wheel. That's right. Um, created by, I guess it was um, like uh, uh, Gil Kane. It was not Gil Kane. It was not. It was Ross Andrew, and it uh, was, um, I guess, Marv Wolfman. And you know what issue? One hundred and I don't know. Okay, you did pretty good. You got six points that round. With that guess. Mark? Burglar. Uh, Lee and Dicko, Macy Fantasy 15. Uh, Carnage, Cletus Cassidy, uh, Mark Bagley, and David Michelini. Carry On. Uh, Miles Warren's um, clone. <laughs> Well, you know I'm going to have to take Hobgoblin. Well, I have Iguana. Um, the Jackal, created by Jerry Conway, um, and I believe Ross Andrew. Are we counting the symbiote now? That's just the symbiote? I, I it's up will, to Dan uh, if you... Okay. I, I, we counted it as an independent thing. I know the list, but I'm going to give it to Mark. Thank you, sir. <laughs> First appearance? Um, um, two, ASM 252 or Marvel Secret Wars 8, um, depending on... I, I, I'm going to go with Secret Wars 8 as the first appearance of the symbiote. 
Venom. Amazing Spider-Man. I'm gonna say 299 as the first appearance, because you get him in the full body there. I'm sorry. I'm not buying this 300 nonsense. Um, I have YEP. Yep. Mm. Um, no secret identity. Um, Ze Zeb Wells and Chris Boccolo. And that's what? Amazing Spider-Man 554? 55? Ah, uh, you were so close. 556. But ah, you get six points. Ah, so Good way to, to end them. that. Yeah. So that's it for the super villains from A to Z. If you guys ever have me back, we will not do that again. Thank you for bearing <laughs> with me. Uh, unless Mark has something to say about it, I guess. Uh, I um, mean, yeah. Mark, you have pulled ahead. TV. It is now Mark at 183 and Dan at 151. Stop the count. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. Game over. Who invited okay. Swarm in here? <laughs> We have three rounds left, and I promise all three of these will go much quicker than the, okay. uh, the previous three. So are you guys ready to go right into round four? Let's do it. Round four. In Amazing Spider-Man 50, Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man no more. In the story, his costume is discovered in a trash can by a kid who then brings it to J. Jonah Jameson. What did Jameson reward this kid with for bringing him the costume? I, I will have to take multiple choice on this. Okay, Dan, looks like you're writing uh, something I, I down. I think I know it, but, but let's do multiple choice. Okay. Is it A, a subscription to the Daily Bugle? Is it B, an issue of the Daily Bugle? Is it C, there was no reward, but there was yelling and the kid left empty-handed? Or was it D, he gave the kid advice on the merits of hard work, and that advice was worth more than any amount of money? Mark, what did you choose? I wrote D, hard work, you know, worth more than its weight in gold. Dan? Before you even gave the multiple choice, I wrote a subscription to the Daily Bugle. It's probably wrong, but I'm going to stick with it. You are both wrong. It was an issue of the Daily Bugle that he was told he could grab on his way out. During Denny O'Neill's run on Amazing Spider-Man, Peter Parker left the Daily Bugle to go work for a competing newspaper. What is the name of this newspaper? Also, I have, I have multiple choice for that answer, but you get a bonus if you can name who the editor-in-chief is of the rival newspaper. I need the multiple choice just to verify. Yeah, me too. Is it A, the Daily Planet? Is it B, the Daily Herald? Is it C, the Daily Globe? Or is it D, the New York Bulletin? Dan, what did you guess? I said C, the Globe. And do you have an editor-in-chief? Uh, I do not. Mark? I also have the Globe, but no editor-in-chief. Okay, you're both right. It was the Daily Globe. That's good for one point. And the editor-in-chief's name is Barney Bushkin. Mm. Mm. He comes back in a pretty fun, spectacular story with Chip Zdarsky. <laughs> Question number three. Who is the fan that is credited with inspiring Spider-Man's symbiote costume? And a bonus question, or bonus point, will be, what were they compensated for the idea? Uh, Would you like I, multiple I choice? Know it. I need multiple choice. Is it A, Grant Curtis? B, Gregory Karras? C, Nicholas Pepin? Or D, Randy Schuler? Yeah. Do you want me to say uh, who it was and, and what the amount was? Only after Mark uh, makes his guess. All right, Dan, I what did you write down? Uh, Randy Schuler, and I believe he was paid two hundred dollars. Mark, I guess I guess Greg Karras, which is wrong, but I guess five hundred dollars for the amount. It was Randy Schuler, and it was two hundred and twenty dollars, which I'll say is correct for Dan. So that is six points for Dan. Whew. Here we go. Here comes the comeback. <laughs> An amazing Spider-Man two forty-eight which is often referenced on your podcast, and you, did, you had the amazing commission for the art print made, which was a lost page that Dan wrote, that anybody who subscribes to your Patreon can get two of these prints every year, and they're awesome. I have one on display over here. I have another collection of them started in, in uh, my art portfolio, well worth the price of admission, which I believe is uh, $10 a month, unless you want the color, which is $20 a month. 
And then maybe we could also talk about your Slack channel later on um, if you haven't already. Uh, in this issue, the kid who collects Spider-Man, Spidey meets a young fan. What is this fan's name? Well, I know this one. I have it. His first name. Or their first name. What if we gave both? Yeah. <laughs> you, get, you still get three points. Uh, Mark, what did you guess? <laughs> Tim Harrison. Dan? I said Tim Harrison as well. Three points for both of you. In Amazing Spider-Man 229, the story Nothing Can Stop the Juggernaut, Madam Web attempts to reach out to two superhero teams to help Spidey stop the Juggernaut. Which two teams did she reach out to? I have it. I have it as well. Okay, Mark, what did you guess? Avengers and X-Men. Dan, what did you guess? I said Avengers and, I said Avengers and X-Men as well. I have the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. Oh! You're probably right. <laughs> you guys are making me second guess myself after that villain round. Um, this next one is a two-part question. You get points for each part. In 1989, fans noticed that Peter Parker's home address was revealed over two issues of Amazing Spider-Man. This address was real, and the family living there started to receive mail addressed to Peter Parker and Spider-Man. The first part of the question, what issues revealed this, this address? And the second part of the question, what is the surname of the family who lived at that address? I just read this story the other day, but I don't remember. You know, yeah, for some reason, Mark, I thought this was one that there's one more on here, Mark, that I really hope you get excited about. But this okay. one was for some reason one I thought you were going to be into. Was it A, Amazing Spider-Man 297 and 298? Was it B, Amazing Spider-Man 303 and 304? Is it C, Amazing Spider-Man 317 and 318? Or is it D, Amazing Spider-Man 324 and 325? Oof. All right. And then the part two of the question, the family surname who lived there, was it A, the Ditko family, B, the Riley family, C, the Fitzpatrick family, or D, the Parker family? Okay, Dan, what two issues did you pick? I said C, 317 and 318. Mark? I also said 317, 318. You're both right. That's one point. And then, Mark, who did you guess as the family surname who lived there? This was the stab in the dark. I wrote C. Fitzpatrick. And Dan? I also said C. Fitzpatrick. It was the Parker family. They think that they literally just went through the yellow pages and found, like, uh, whoever was living in the, like, in an address that was the Parkers. Mm. So that's, that's one point for each of you for that question. Moving on to question number seven. In 1975, Marvel released the album Rock Reflections of a Superhero, a rock opera with interludes that featured a story narrated by Stan Lee. There are several bangers on this album, but which of the following is not a song on that record? A. Spider-Man Save Me. B. Peter Stays and Spider-Man Goes. C. No One's Got a Crush on Peter. D. A Soldier Starts to Bleed. Or E. Square Boy. Mark, what did you guess? This was a dart throw. I wrote C. No one has a crush on Peter. Dan? I said A. Spider-Man save me. Dan, you were correct. And Mark, no one's got a crush on Peter is like the best song on the album. I'm just kidding. Oh my God. It's really, it's really oh. fun though. Now, Spider-Man uh, save me was, is, a, is a song that I, ended, I got off Napster a lifetime ago. And it was uh, <laughs> Michael Graves, who was a, a lead singer of Misfits after Glenn Danzig left. And I don't think that song's ever come out officially, but I'll send it to you guys after, after we're finished here today. In uh, 1965. Uh, was it Peter Stay and Spider-Man Goes is, is like another banger. That one's really fun. It's pretty good. And I, I also like Square Boy, you know. Mark, I've got yeah. a CD of it. I'm happy to send it to you if you want okay. uh, okay. well for you to check out. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Question number eight. In 1965. Esquire magazine had a back-to-college issue that featured 28 people who count. Spidey made the list at number 28. Of the following, who did not appear on the list? Was it A, Malcolm X, B, JFK, C, James Bond, or D, Federico Fellini? 
Other people on the list included B.F. Skinner, Stanley Kubrick, and the Hulk. But who did not appear from Malcolm X, JFK, James Bond, and Federico Fellini? I'm scared of the answer to this. Well, Dan, what was your answer? I said A, Malcolm X. And Mark? I said B, JFK. It was D, Federico Fellini. Did not, did not appear on the list. JFK was dead. How does he count? He's dead. <laughs> I don't know. He was number one. No, I'm sorry. JFK was number three. Malcolm X was number one. All right, Mark. This one, wow. this one I had. Uh, Mark, I had you squarely in mind for this one. Oh, God. On June 5th, 1987, Stanley officiated a wedding between Spider-Man and Mary Jane, and it took place at Shea Stadium before a baseball game. What okay. two teams were playing against each other in this game? That's the oh. first question. And then the bonus point is there, are, there were six Marvel characters who attended the wedding. And I'll give you one point for each character you can guess. Would you like multiple choice, Mark? Yeah, I need I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, A, the Mets versus the Pirates. B, the Yankees versus the Phillies. C, the Mets versus the Yankees. Or D, the Mets versus the Brewers. All right, Mark. What is your guess well, the for the two teams that it's, played? It's, it's A, Mets, Pirates. That's what Dan, I said Dan, what did well. you guess? Okay, you were right. A, Mets, the Mets Pirates. won five to one. Okay. 87, and then, they were, you know, almost a, almost a playoff team. Go on. That's right. So <laughs> you each get one point. And then did you guess what six Marvel characters attended the wedding? I have... Uh, Firestar, Captain America, Hulk, Iceman, Thor, and Iron Man. Okay, Dan? I have Cap, Hulk, Thor, Iron Man, and Mr. Fantastic. Okay. It was Hulk, Captain America, Iceman, Firestar, the Green Goblin, and Doctor Doom. Mark, you guessed four of those. Dan, you guessed two. That was a generous invite list to bring on Dr. Doom and the Green Goblin. <laughs> round five is The Voice of Spidey. For this round, I will name five TV shows or movies that feature Peter Parker, Spider-Man. There are no multiple choices since three of these individuals have appeared on your podcast. One point if you can name the actor and another point if you can name one other project they've acted in. Does that all sound clear? That sounds great. Sure. Okay, great. Uh, well, let's start with Spider-Man, 1967, on ABC. Who played Peter Parker and name another project they were in? They were a guest on your Centennial issue, or episode 200. I can't think of his name, but I know what else he's done. Yeah, same. <laughs> he uh, also claimed that walloping web snappers were, was only used on that TV show. Although it feels like that would have come in during Spider-Verse at some point. Okay, are you ready? Sure. His name was Paul Souls. Mm. What other projects did he appear in? Who goes... Does it matter who Dan. goes first? Or, okay. uh, I said Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And do you know what his character's name was? Herbie the Elf. Or Hermie the Elf. Is Mark? Hermie or Herbie? It's Hermie, it's her Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> yes, one point for each of you. Question number two. The Amazing Spider-Man on CBS 1977 through 1979. He was a guest on your podcast. I believe it was episode nine of season three. What is his name and what other project has he acted in? You guys are ready? Mark, you can go first. <laughs> Dan only interviewed him. <laughs> Sorry. Did, uh, do you know another project that he was in? Uh, uh, I don't. Dan? I'm, I'm drawing a blank for some reason. Um, okay. I want to say his name is Peter. Um, and he was in Sound of Music, Once Upon a Time uh, in Hollywood, yes, yes. a bunch of stuff. And, and it's late in the night, and I can't remember his name. Okay, you get one point, and his name is Nicholas Hammond. 
Question right. number three. Of course it is. Question number three. Spider-Man, the animated series, 1994 to 1998. He was a guest on your podcast along with John Semter, the, the creator, the showrunner. What is his name and what other project has he been in? Whenever you're ready, Dan. Uh, Christopher Daniel Barnes, and he's in That's The right. Little Mermaid. Mark? I didn't have his name, but he was in The Brady Bunch as uh, uh, Greg. That's right. Two points for Dan, one point for Mark. Spider-Man, the new animated series, 2003 on MTV. Who played Peter Parker? And what other projects have they been in? They have not been a guest. This I actually know. (laughs) Mark, you want to go first? Yeah, Neil Patrick Harris, Doogie Howser. Dan? That's exactly what I wrote. <laughs> Two points each. And but the I'll, final I'll question. I'll say Her- Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. To, to and How out. I Met Your Mother was how another one. How I Met one. Your Mother. Yeah. Okay. Question number five. Final question. And then we're in our last round. Who played Peter Parker in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? And one other project that they've been in. It's not a trick. If you can name a, uh, an actor who played Peter Parker, it counts. Mark. I have Chris Pine and the Star Trek reboot as uh, Kirk. Dan? That's exactly what I wrote. Two points each. Perfect. All right, Mark, you're still pretty well ahead, but we're in the final round, which is round Sinister Six. Let's talk spider talk. So these are all questions that are about you and your podcast. So these are uh, hopefully uh, a little more personal for you. and not all of these number, will be number number one. Mark, do you listen? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These are not. Uh, some of these will be multiple choice. Not all of them. The first one is not. I want you to each name uh, the other's first issue of Amazing Spider-Man, the first one that you bought, or that your co-host bought. I believe it's two ninety six. Mark, is that correct? That is correct. Mark, what is Dan's first issue of Amazing Spider-Man? ASM 375. You guys are both right. Look at us. We are getting Uh, going after uh, (laughs) You both get three points for that. Dan, who is Mark's favorite rogue? And do you need multiple choice? Um, I don't think so. I think his favorite rogue is Dr. Octopus. I have Mysterio. Based off your biography on the website. Oh, oh fair enough. Uh, 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 uh. I know he loves Mysterio. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give it to him because I've talked about that. Give it to him. Okay. Just okay. give it to him. Okay. Right. At, the very Mark, least, Do- at, at the very least, I think Dr. Octopus is, he thinks is Spider-Man's like greatest villain. Got yeah. it. All right, Mark, what is Dan's? Oh, man. Um, I'm going to say Venom. I have Hobgoblin. Oh, right. He is Hobgoblin, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, okay. Don't give me points. And, and if you had asked for multiple, and if you'd asked for multiple choice, Rec Rap would have been one of the options. Okay. <laughs> Getting a little more personal. Dan, what is Mark's birthday? Oh, it was just the other day. Um, August... Let's say August 14th. Mark, when's your birthday? August 3rd. Mm. Mark, when is Dan's birthday? It was just the other day. Uh, July 22nd. Dan, when's your birthday? That's my mother's birthday, actually. Uh, (laughs) July... (laughs) Partial credit. <laughs> <laughs> July 17th. Oh, man. I was oh, whenever, no fa- whenever Facebook says. Speaking of whatever Facebook says, Mark, when is Dan's wedding anniversary? Oh, f- <laughs> <laughs> Bleep. <laughs> um, June 14th. 
Dan, when is your wedding anniversary? See, that, I need to know that for it to count. No, it's uh, June 10th. Oh, right. I'm close. <laughs> when when is Mark's? I, and Dan, what I'll is Mark's just, wedding anniversary? Said, I, I have absolutely no clue what Mark's wedding anniversary is. Mark, what's your wedding anniversary? But, I have no clue. No, uh, November, <laughs> November 24th. Also, right. my brother's to my, birthday. To, <laughs> to my credit, Mark was in my wedding. I was not around when Mark got married. <laughs> Mark, so over the in years. Maryland in June. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> Very comfortable. Mark, over the years, Dan has written for several publications, two of them being The Village Voice and The Hollywood Reporter. Which of the following is not an article that Dan has written? Is it A, why Steve Ditko didn't look back? Is it B, four things the MCU has gotten right about Peter Parker and four things they have gotten wrong? Is it C, why Spider-Man means so much? Or is it D, Spider-Verse and why it's time to let Peter Parker grow up? Which article did Dan not write? Let me say B. Dan, which article did you not write? Honestly, I thought I wrote all of this. You did not write. You did not write B. You are correct, Mark. Four things the MCU has gotten right about Peter Parker, and four things they have gotten wrong. I, Dan, I think I wrote one. The four things that Peter, they've gotten wrong about Peter Parker, but not right for the Village Voice. Is that accurate? No, I. I'll have to look it up. There was something similar, but it, it wouldn't have been that close, or I wouldn't have made it a question. But okay, I, all right. I can definitely double say, check. That seems that's way too shallow for you, Dan. I, I would it not, is true. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you, Mark. I appreciate Me, you. on the other hand. <laughs> well, so, Dan, in 2017, Mark published a book, 100 Things Spider-Man Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die. It's a beautiful book right here. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I have read it cover to cover. Well, then, can you let me know which of the following is not a chapter in the book? Is it A? Okay. Is it A, Best of Frenemies, Peter Parker and Harry Osborn? Is it B, Spider-Man Beats the Comics Code? Is it C, Jerry Conway, Prodigy Turned Villain? Or is it D, Listen to the Amazing Spider-Man Podcast? I'm sorry, the Amazing Spider-Talk Podcast. I want to say it's C, Jerry Conway, Prodigy Turned Villain. Mark, which of those is not a chapter in your book? Can you name the first two again? Because C is a chapter. <laughs> okay. Best of Frenemies, Peter Parker and Harry Osborn. And uh, yeah. B. What was Go B? Ahead. I'm sorry. Say B again. Spider-Man Beats the Comics Code. It's A, right? I don't it even is remember. A. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so that's no, you, now you did have a chapter <laughs> called... You did have a chapter called Best Frenemies Forever, which was about Spider-Man and the Human Torch. Right. But I know it. how much you love Spectacular Spider-Man 200, yes. and so you could have easily written a chapter called Best of Frenemies. There we but go. we, the have, we of... have an episode of our show called Best of Frenemies, don't we? It's about Amazing Spider-Man 200. Mm. Okay. I'm sorry, Spectacular Spider-Man 200. Yes. All right. <laughs> sorry, Mark. It's Okay. I barely have, remembered myself. <laughs> we have two questions left. Um, you going to get this 18 one, points? <laughs> or no, well, 18 points? <laughs> well, this one will be worth five points if you, can, if you get it. And then the next mm -hmm. one, there will be, you'll, you'll see in a second when we get to it. But okay. since, since Spider Talk began with issue, se uh, issue seven of Superior Spider-Man, there have been several artists and writers who have worked on the title. I would like you to name the top four of each writer and artist in terms of how many issues they worked on of both Amazing and Superior and Mark, the annuals do count. I will give you a list of 10 names, writers, and then 10 names of artists. And then I want you to list in order who wrote the most at number one and who wrote the least at number four and who drew the most at number one and then who drew the most at number four. For the writers in alphabetical order, we have Ed Brisson, Christos Gage, Patrick Gleason, Jed McKay, Matthew Rosenberg, Dan Slott, Nick Spencer, Kelly Thomas, Thompson, Zeb Wells, and Cody Ziegler. Of those and these ten, are only people that have appeared on the show. 
No, they've just we, our written... issues. We've reviewed their issues. That's right. Oh. For both amazing and, and superior, including the annuals. For the artist, we have Mark Bagley, Giuseppe Comancoli, Marcelo Ferreira, Patrick Leeson, Stuart Emonian, Ed McGinnis, Ryan Otley, Umberto Ramos, John Romita Jr., and Ryan Stegman. Dan, why don't you give your writers first? All right, in this order, uh, Slot, Spencer, Gage, Wells. Okay, Mark? I have Slot, Spencer, Wells, Gage. Mark, you are correct. Five points. Dan Slot did, wrote did 96. Co- did, co- did co-writing count or no? If they co-wrote, I would have given. I would have tallied it as an issue, so okay. it would have counted. So it would be Dan Slot at ninety-six, Nick Spencer at eighty-two, Zeb Wells at thirty-three, and then Christos Gage at fourteen. Really, Gage was that few? As, as far as my uh, my research went, but if you find That's afterward, surprising. we can overturn the the results. I, I'm fine with it. I just it was surprising to me. He felt like such a mainstay. Yeah. And Mark, why don't you give the list of uh, artists? Yeah, this was tough for me. I said Camo, Bagley, Ramos, Ramita Jr. Okay, Dan? Um, I said uh, Ramos, Camo, Bagley, Imminen. Okay, you were both wrong. It would have been Giuseppe Comancoli at number one with 42 issues. Umberto Ramos at number two with 24 issues. Ryan Otley at number three mm. with, with 19 issues. And then Ramita Jr. and Bagley were tied for number four with 17. So I would have accepted either in that order. Okay. It's the very final question of the, of the, of the trivia. Thank you guys for bearing with me on this. You will get one point for every answer you get correct. And Mark, you were in the lead, so we're going to alternate. We're going to go back and forth. Each of you will make a guess. I want you to, early on in the podcast, you compiled a list of 30 essential comics that every Spider fan should read. I'll give you one point for each correct answer if you can name 10 of these stories from your co-host list. So Mark, you're guessing what, of the 15 titles Dan put up, what 10 of them are, and Dan, you're going to guess what 15 titles Mark did and I will do 10 of them and you'll get one point per, per question. Unless oh, Mark, God. if you want to make this interesting, since Dan is down by, it looks like he's down by, no. I'm not making no? this interesting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say we could weight it a little differently, but no. uh, Mark, <laughs> so Mark, you go first. Can you name a, a storyline that Dan listed as an essential Spider-Man story? Uh, ASM 248 Kitty Collects. That's right. Dan? Um, Spider-Man No More? That's right. Mark? Um, The Final Battle, ASM 40? The Final Battle, the one between Norman and and Peter? Goblin, yeah. That is right. The Goblin Unmasked. Right. Dan? Um, the, uh, the Nothing Can Stop the Juggernaut? Mm. That's right. Mark? Um, no One Dies. Um, numbers are escaping me right now. Six, uh, six, six, whatever that is. The slot, um, Marcos Martin one. I have that as being your choice. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I picked Spider Island. <laughs> Is Spider Island this? <laughs> we'll find out. You can guess it next if you want. Dan? Uh, Web of Death. That's right. What? I That'd picked be... that? Wow. I'm you so picked weird. Amazing Spider Man uh, 397, 398, and Spectacular 220 through 221. Web of Death. All right, Mark, you want to guess another one of Dan's? Spider Island. <laughs> no, I have that as, as a story that you put on the list. You let me have two slot stories? What's wrong with you, Dan? 
I thought we would have split you that up. You went first. Oh you my went god. First. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, Dan. Do I get a point if I say Spider Island? <laughs> <laughs> you do not. <laughs> okay. Well, then I'll choose a Marvel two in one annual number two. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So speaking of that, for somebody who doesn't think annuals count, Mark, you sure do pick a lot of annuals as stories that count. I uh, well, you know. <laughs> um, Dan, or Mark, rather. Oh God. I remember it was that spectacular, if, if, if we were monsters, I don't remember the number, though. Here um, there be monsters, I'll give you that. Spectacular yeah, Spider-Man okay. 14. There you go. Dan? Um, is to be an Avenger one, uh, uh, annual number three? It is not, but it, it was listed as one that Mark thought about putting on the list, but he didn't officially put it on the list. Which was another time where I was like, Mark, I thought you said the annuals don't count. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're really adding up over here. Mark. Oh, uh, well. Um, what, are the, what are the dumb stories that Dan thinks matters? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, 500. I the do not have 500 out. on the list. Oh, man. Uh, um, how about the, the Venom suit saga? Can you be more specific? The black suit saga? Oh, so like Amazing Spider-Man 252? Homecoming? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Hobgoblin saga, 238. I do not have that on Dan's list. What the? But what I do you... have, Dan, Dan, you did pick to be an Avenger ASM uh, Annual 3. Got it. Okay. Um, is that because the Hobgoblin Saga is on Mark's list? It is not on Mark's list. Wow. Look at us. This is, it, this is a it, malpractice. Well, you guys had several titles that you didn't put on the list because you'd previously discussed them and you didn't want to discuss them again. Yeah. L like uh, the Moreland uh, uh, coming right. home. Um, I know. Wait, did we? I just said, did we do annual one on that list? You annual do love one. those annuals. Annual one. That's a Dan one for sure. Amazing annual one? Yes. No. Dan, what did uh, we do? What about, what about the wedding issue? For Mark, annual twenty-one. Yes. yes. No. Okay. Mm. But for Guess Dan, that. annual twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Dan did not that. pick that one. <laughs> All right, this Dan. Good to see that we really value each other's opinions so much. I mean, I, I know another one that Mark has left off the list uh, for me, but I'm trying to think of one for Mark. Um, like from various er – uh, how about the death of Gwen Stacy? No, we didn't do that one. You did not do that one. Okay. All right, Mark. You have two I more. It's hard. So many years ago. Um, it's like I'm the only one over here listening to old episodes of the podcast. I think so. I can name a few of mine, but uh, you know, I know I, I know one of, at least one of mine that you haven't named yet, but. <laughs> Unless I'm confusing it, because there was I, there was like one point we were like, well, we should split them up. <laughs> um, except for Marvel Two and One, you were like, I ain't touching that one. Um, I, I I I I'm out of guesses. All right, I'm, Dan, I'm, any I'm, any last guesses? Uh, Spider Man versus Wolverine.
Nope. Um, okay. I mean, I can go through. I can go through a couple more. Like, I know that we did, uh, like the final chapter, Master Planner, and 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 Spider Man No More. I think found their way on there. I thought we didn't do Master Planner. We were like, oh, that's clearly, you know. Yeah, I, thought... I think that was crazy. But I think Spider Man yeah. No More found its way on there. Spider Man No More did not find its way on there. But I'm going to go ahead and just read through the ones that I have. Oh, no, I'm sorry. They do. But, Mark, you guessed that one. That was your first guess, I think, Dan, for Mark. Yeah, you was, guessed uh, that earlier. Yeah. I remember the, the, the second Venom arc was on there. Yep. From me. Mark picked Return of Venom. Re- the Commuter Cometh. To Have and to mm. Hold, that amazing Sensational Spider-Man oh. annual number one. Um, amazing Spider-Man 17 through 19, the original end of Spider-Man. Mm. Spectacular Spider-Man 35, Heroes Don't Cry, and then Spectacular Spider-Man 200, Best of Enemies, was Mark's list. Dan, you did Rage of the Rhino, Doomed Affairs, which was that layover issue with uh, Mary Jane and and Spider-Man, Learning Curve, Ultimate Spider-Man 8 through 12, Spider-Man and the Human Torch by Dan Slott, Unscheduled Stop, All My Past Remembered, Civil War, the Roger Stern Black Cat story in Amazing Spider-Man 226 and 227. Spider-Man The Lost Years. Ultimate Spider-Man Death of Spider-Man. Superior Spider-Man number one. And then Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine. Oh, wow. We just and that. with that, Mark, <laughs> it, you, it sounds like your Amazing Fantasy 15 is safe for one more year. Uh, your uh, final score is 213, Mark. To I Dan, won! 188. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming for you, Mark. I'm coming for you. Oh my God, that was. I. This feels like a like a 15 round fight, and <laughs> and, and we're both just like, ah, oh God, what were we doing for the last 15 uh, rounds? <laughs> it ended up being a bit more of a gauntlet than I had in mind. So thank you guys for bearing with it, both oh you my. and the listeners. Well, thank you, Tristan. Uh, yeah. That was a lot of fun, and really uh, shows like. One, how quickly for you forget something over 400 episodes. And two, how bad recall is in the human brain when put on the spot. Um, but uh, this was a lot of fun, Tristan. And thanks for all the hard work that went into putting this together. I'm sure even on the multiple choice that we didn't get, there were clever answers we never heard. Uh, so I, I'm sure a lot of hard work went into this. Tristan, do you want to tell everybody at home a little bit about like your process and how much like work you put into this? Because like, one, it should be evident, but two, I think it's worth noting. Yeah, well, I, you know, Dan, you had approached me uh, months ago and asked if I would be interested in, in sort of hosting this. Uh, I've never done a trivia uh, competition before, either like hosting it or or coming up with the questions in the format. So, which I think would probably be a little evident by um, by tonight's game. But um, so I started months ago, just re-listening to old episodes of Spider Talk. I, I was mentioning to you guys before the show that uh, once I set the Guinness record uh, a couple years ago, I started reading through every issue of Spider-Man in publication order. So, you know, across all ongoing and miniseries and one shots and, and, and sort of all that. Um, and so once I caught up with your podcast at Superior Spider-Man number seven, I then would read the issues and then listen to your, your podcast alongside it. Um, and then as time is getting closer to tonight's recording, I ended up... Uh, sort of just binging your podcast over the past month or so. Um, and ultimately the last two weeks listening to it at 1.75 speed. So I've had a lot of Mark and Dan in my ear for the past uh, couple months, frankly. Um, and I'm sure my wife will be happy to uh, not hear your voices emanating from the, the bathroom when I'm in the shower or, or when I'm doing the dishes or, or, or whatever. So I, you know, I, I wanted to try to make it personal toward your podcast. So a lot of the questions were things you, you discussed on the podcast and, and sort of, to your point, though, 400 episodes is a, a long time, and, and Mark clearly doesn't listen to it. So um, <laughs> he's at a bit of a disadvantage there. Um, uh, Tristan, wow. um, f- first of all, the real winner is you because you're free from listening to us now, and you're free to unsubscribe and, and all of that stuff. But why but, would I? Um, I, I? I am curious, though. Yeah, uh, to that point, I am curious as a listener. Um, I mean, you came on listening to the show, I think, what, three or four years ago? Uh, maybe a little bit longer than that, but, like, what's it been like? Because Mark and I can reflect on 400 uh, 
episodes and what that means to us. But I'm curious for you as a listener, what you have kind of witnessed uh, transpire now that you've been listening back and been with us for so long. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to get your reflections. Well, I think the, 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 the number one takeaway that I have had while listening specifically to the older episodes and then now through like the, the current episodes as I'm sort of listening to both is your friendship developing and clearly how close the two of you are and sort of how you, you started as not necessarily strangers, but, you know, I don't even think you had met when you had first started the podcast, right, in person. I think you'd only met over the Internet. So sort of hearing your friendship grow and sort of, you know, Mark, you going to Dan's wedding and, and sort of all that has been a pretty special thing um, that I don't think either of you lose sight of, but you, I also hope you don't. So it, it's been really interesting kind of like hearing that relationship be fostered. Um, I've also, the other interesting takeaway for me, Mark, is that, you know, I, I hang out with Dan socially and we have mutual friends and, you know, I see him not as often as I think we'd like, but, you know, fairly regularly. And tonight's the first time I've ever met you. <laughs> like, I mean, like we're, I think we're Facebook friends and, and sort of through, through uh, Dan here and there. But uh, right. so I, I was telling Dan the other day how listening to your podcast, I often feel like I, I already know you, but you have no idea who the hell I am. You know, so like, um, you know, discussing sort of, again, going back to the early on episodes, because that's what's freshest in my mind right now. Um, when you started running and sort of how, you know, that personal fitness has kind of factored into your routine and become such a big part of your life. And I was like, oh, I've, I've started working out. I'm trying to lose weight too. Oh, just like Mark, it's going to be great. And then it's like, but, <laughs> but that's a connection I have to you that, that is not, you know, reciprocated, you know, the other way. So it's, it's been a pretty interesting experience for me to like, again, I feel so close to Dan. And when I listen to him, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to him talk when we're hanging out, but I feel like you're always there too. So it's, it's, uh -huh. um, you know, it's, it's, it's been pretty interesting to kind of do this exercise on my end. I, I appreciate that. I, I've generally found in life that, you know, the more people get to know me, the more that they don't want to hang out with me. So this, 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 you know, that, that just warms my heart here. So, you know, like keep, keep that image of me in your mind fresh, uh, but don't actually get to know me because then it'll all change and you'll be like, what is, this? who is this guy? What, what's going on with him? He, I, he I says think... Daniel's so count and then he counts them. What is this nonsense? <laughs> I feel like if I've, if I've, if I've uh, made it through about, 600 hours of listening to you talk at this point it'd be pretty tough to not like you i mean it would be like attaching our friendship with a rivet gun right dan or uh yeah well, uh, to, to that point mark and 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 i don't know if you echo these sentiments but um like we have such a natural rapport like uh, over the internet but when we're in person together which you and i have hung out i don't know maybe a dozen times About like dozen, that might even yeah. be generous yeah. Um, it is a little awkward because I'm so used to having this kind of artifice between us, you know, uh, uh, of the internet that I'm like, Oh, should I just be talking like nonstop to Mark? Like we're performing, but we're not like, so like silence gets to actually creep in when I stop talking, uh, but which is almost never, but, um, it, it is a little bit different and it's an unusual friendship in person. Weirdly enough, I, at least that's my read on it. I don't know if you have a similar feeling, Mark. I don't know if it's, a, I mean, I think we're both naturally awkward people in a way, yeah. but, uh, but not, you know, I mean, I don't know. I, I... It, it, but it, it's different. It's different. Like th th there is something to like having this show as a like vessel for our friendship. Uh, there you go. Uh, I, uh, so to speak. So no anyway. touching. <laughs> yeah, that's, it. that's exactly it. Yeah. Um, you come to find out, I'm a never nude. No. Um, but uh, 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 400 episodes. It's pretty cool. I mean, we just celebrated 10 years, which feels like somehow the bigger achievement. Um, but like there is there is something to thinking. Like we have, that's about 40 episodes a year that we're doing, and. That's a pretty like strict output uh, that like we managed to pull off, and it's something I'm really proud of. Um, you know, 400 episodes over 50 years would be nothing to scoff at either. But like, there's something to the regularity that we've hit this number without really gassing it and doing like fake in between episodes. Like we we really put out something of substance at, uh, like every week, every other week, and that's something I'm immensely proud of. 
Is this where I'm supposed to say something or? Uh... Sure, if you have any reflections. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> reflections? No, I, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, to your other statement, I mean, yeah, like, I, I, I kind of feel like, you know, what, 10th anniversary, how do we make it 10 years? Obviously, it was the, 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 the dynamic and the chemistry, but like 400 episodes is, you know, many things can last 10 years all you got to do is stay in it for 10 years, but like 400 episodes is a lot is work. Um, and you know, we, we have both seen tremendous life changes over the span of these 400 episodes between, you know, children and family and other houses and apartments and all that kind of stuff. And I, you know, I think at the end of the day, this is something that, you know, yes, we're passionate about, but it's also important to us. Um, we we want to see this show continue to thrive to to go on i mean you know having such a good friend in you dan certainly is an incentive to keep doing it but like i think at the end of the day like we could continue to be friends and not have this show like you said every week um but we 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 do this show because we have a purpose with this show um we like doing it and it means something to us and you know i joked about way back and we constantly refer to it like don't call me in five years or whatever but the fact of the matter is like <laughs> you know this will go until you know there is a f real physical reason why i can't go no more at this point and and you know we will just keep churning out episodes because we love it uh, we love our listeners. We love the connections we make with folks like Tristan and, you know, like Viva La Amazing Spider Talk. You know, that's all I can say. Well put. Yeah. I mean, friendship is really at the heart of it. And 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 that's the people you meet along the way. I, I don't know without this platform, I would have met Tristan and we become close friends. Um People who uh, are listening to this don't know that uh, Alex Galucky is also on the line here with us, our editor, and he's become a good friend uh, and part of the team uh, of, <laughs> over the past uh, uh, year or so that he's been with us. Um, it's a growing family, whether that be on the Slack or whatever. Like uh, I've gotten so close to so many people, whether they were contributors to the website back in the day when we were writing content or whatever, like I, I, I find it a growing venture uh, of meeting like-minded rational comics readers um, who care about the same things that I do. And that, that is an incredible amount of value and, uh, and meaning to me. Um, and I, I can't wait to keep sharing it with more and more and more people um, until comics are obsolete and no one's thinking about them anymore. And we've, we've run out of things to talk about, but, um, uh, I, I always, I always joke. Um, oh my gosh. Why am I blanking right now? Cause we've been doing Forget this for I four hours. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing this for four hours. Um, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, cheers to everybody. 400 episodes. Uh, what, what, a, what a celebration. Here's to 400 more. Are we going to make it to a thousand? I, I have to like gamify that out <laughs> with our lifespan. But every time we hit one of these things, uh, is a, like a, a celebration and something really exciting that we've managed to do so much. And I, I will stick by every episode that we put out as something I'm deeply, immensely proud of. Um, so, and, and that means a lot to me. All right. Do we want to take this home, Dan? <laughs> before I Let's fall, do it. Let's take before it I fall home. asleep at my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, it is time. Time for all good things to come to an end. So we want to say thank you to you, the listeners and viewers, for tuning into this episode of the Amazing Spider Talk. Plus, an extra special thanks to Tristan Matthews for being such an excellent host on today's show. Thanks again, Tristan, for, for, for putting this all together and making our 400th episode so special. Um, if people want to find out more about you or read about your achievements in collectibles, uh, what, what can they do? I don't think there's much of, a, of an imprint out there. You can 
find me on Instagram, Cabins in the Air, if you would like to. Uh, otherwise, I'm on Facebook, but I'm not very uh, a very public personality, so I don't really have anything to plug here. But congratulations, guys. Uh, what an achievement. This is great. Thank you again, Tristan. Thank um, you. I, I, this podcast exists because of listener support on Patreon, of which Tristan is one. So he can he can vouch for it. For only $3.99 a month, you can help support our show's existence while getting early episodes, including the reviews that we do the same week the comics release, exclusive artwork, and a ton of other bonuses. We want to say a thank you to everyone who supports us and the work that we do. Without you, we would never have reached 400 episodes. To download our earliest episodes, including interviews with legendary creators like JMD, Tom DeFalco, Ron Friends, Mark Bagley, David Michelinie, and more, and trust us, as we keep adding more and more Centennial uh, episodes, that means 100 more in this feed. That is Amazing Spider Talk Back Issues Podcasts on Apple Podcasts. So, Mark, until it's revealed that our podcast is actually a delivery device for a genetic matrix that will make all of our listeners believe they are actually Aunt May. What's our motto? With great podcasts, there must also come the amazing spider talk. To 400 more. I need a nap.